Hello, Pro Organizers. It is your podcast co-host, Melissa Klug. It is another wonderful week at Pro Organizer Studio, and I am excited to bring you a podcast today with a personal friend of mine who is also a great organizer and is in our Inspired Organizer program. I wanted to start with a little story today. If you are on our mailing list, which we would absolutely love for you to be on, we try to send you really important updates about organizing and all sorts of other things. But in our email this week, we were talking about follow-up and how sometimes organizers worry that they're bothering someone and they only follow up one time with a potential client and then just say, well, I guess they never wanted to work with me or something happened or whatever. Jen had a phrase that she used one time that was make following up your religion. And Following up with your potential clients does not mean that you are pushy or aggressive or salesy. There are so many ways that you can do that follow-up in a way that is loving and kind and caring, but it often takes potential clients many times before they are ready to book with you. I want to bring home a story that happened to me in my organizing business this week. In addition to working at Pro Organizer Studio, I still have active clients in my organizing business. And this woman had contacted me for a consultation. And I I went to her house and I said, oh, how did you find out about me? And she gave me the name of one of her friends who was a client of mine in 2019, in like early 2019. And she's like, oh yeah, Jen told me about, yes, so many Jens. (laughs) This was, this client was named Jen. She's like, Jen told me about you a really long time ago. And I just wasn't ready yet, but you know, Jen talked about you and all the work that you guys did together. And I I always had it in the back of my mind. I always thought about it. And she said, I followed you on social media and I saw, you know, some of the things you put out there and some of the things you put on social media were things that really resonated with me. There are things that I put on my home by 11 social media that are really, first of all, my social media is, it has no strategy. And we're going to be talking about social media a little bit more on the podcast in the upcoming weeks. But my social media on on my Home by 11 account is really just intended, I got to be honest with you, to entertain me and to entertain my followers. I try to post funny things relevant to home organizing or, you know, being at home. And I, but I also make sure that I really do forward my personal philosophies about organizing. And some of my personal philosophies about organizing are things like, one of my favorite phrases is shop inside your own house. Uh, I use that in my own house with my own children and my own family. I really believe it for clients as much as possible. I really believe that clients often find exactly what they need to store their items inside their own house. There are things that I had put on my social media that apparently hit her, but again, it was almost three full years from the time she had heard about me and that her friend recommended me until the time that she contacted me. Well, this is perhaps not a common situation. In my business, I have had people that it's been a year from the time they first contacted me until the time they were ready to book. I had a client recently who reached out to me and said, oh, we corresponded in October. We're ready to start now. I had no recollection of this client. I had to go back and like recreate our messages and I had to like spark my brain about what our conversation had been on the consultation because I did not remember it had been months since I had spoken to her. Well, they were finally ready. It took them a while. So I just want to tell you, be patient. By the way, this is in any stage of your organizing journey. It doesn't matter if you are brand new and waiting for your first client. It doesn't matter if you've been doing it for four years and you may be in a little bit of a valley right now. Sometimes going back, going to those prior people that had contacted you but never followed up, you never, ever know. One of our Inspired Organizer members had a story that she posted in our private Facebook group the other day where we do coaching and support. And she posted a story about a client who had contacted her and this organizer didn't have any openings in her schedule. And in fact, it had to take a couple months off for something personal. And that client said, nope, I have to get it done right away. I can't wait for you. Well, long story short, guess who ended up waiting for that organizer? (laughs) So after her leave was over, that person contacted her and said, hey, I don't want anyone else. I want you. So please, please, please remember, following up with those people that you think may be just gone forever and never want to organize with you, you absolutely never know. And just know, some, some of these people are just waiting for the right time to hire you. Be patient, I swear. And we're going to talk a lot in the upcoming weeks, not only about social media, 
And I have many, many things we are gonna talk about with social media, but we're also gonna talk about other marketing tactics like lead magnets and email lists and that type of thing. So stay tuned for good stuff coming up on the podcast. Hey, before we get going today with our podcast guest, I am giving you two weeks in a row of double the podcast love. I am breaking this up into two episodes because she had so much wisdom to share that I really wanted to break it up so that everybody could get the best of this episode and not feel overwhelmed by a really long one. I am so happy to introduce you to my friend, Amy Mayorga. She is the minimalista mom on Instagram, and she is the owner of Minimalista Organizing in the Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas area. She has built an amazing brand based on something that she was genuinely interested in in her own life and sharing that with people, and I can't wait to have her tell you all about it. You're listening to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast with Melissa Klug and Jen Obermeyer. Thank you so much for joining in. Our mission is to broaden the horizons of savvy business women in the organizing industry by instilling confidence and inspiring authenticity. You'll gain new insight into strategies designed specifically for professional organizers. So now let's get started. We are continuing with a new series we have where we introduce you to some of our awesome inspired organizers. And we have someone here today. I am very happy to say she's not only an inspired organizer, but she is also a friend of mine. We have gotten to know each other from the KonMari organizing world, and she is just a lovely human being. She has an incredibly successful business. She's a mom. She's a wife. She's a million things. But I would like to welcome my friend Amy to the podcast. How are you? Great. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. No problem. So happy that you are here. I always love talking to you. If you are watching this on YouTube, Amy has the most beautiful background. Anytime we're on a zoom together, it's just, she has this beautiful background. So it's always like peaceful, calming and minimalist, which is your thing. So why don't you give us a little bit before you get into kind of your branding and how you decided that, can you tell us a little bit about your story of how you got started in organizing? So a backstory, I am a trainer trained bilingual speech and language pathologist. Went to grad school for that and I started doing that. And then we got pregnant with our first child who is now seven. And I don't know when I had him, I just felt like this big desire to just to spend some time at home to like be there as a stay at home parent. So I kind of did that on a whim. We didn't really plan that. It was just kind of like, I'm not ready for him to go to school. I want more time. And it just kind of evolved into like, okay, I guess I'm staying home. And then we had our second baby and I just felt so overwhelmed. Like I wanted to do all of the things I wanted to have all of the things I just wanted to do everything right. And, but I didn't know what I was doing and I just felt so stressed and I felt particularly stressed like inside our home. Like I felt like I was always picking up stuff. It was always so many things that I had to do and I could never get them all straight. And I was just very stressed. I felt like I had to leave every single day to get out of the house, to go do something. And I never wanted to like hang out at home. I didn't really want to have friends over. I just, I was just like this ball of stress and I couldn't figure it out. And I remember one day going to my very good friend's house and I opened up her closet and it was just nice and neat and calm. And I was like, wow, your closet looks beautiful. And she was like, oh, I just read this great book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. And it was just serendipitous. Like it was the right timing. I went home, I downloaded the book on Audible and I just listened to the whole thing and I followed her steps to a T. It was, it was the right time, the right place. I was ready for a change and I implemented it. And that being said, I had a baby. So I had my second child. I had a baby and a toddler who was like going to preschool two days a week. And I took every pocket of time that I could for like six months to fully declutter our home. I'm talking (laughs) donations after donations and trunk fulls of things to just getting out of the house. And this sudden dramatic change in our home and in our lifestyle, it just changed everything for me. It was like a lightning bolt. I I felt awake. I felt alive and passionate and I just wanted to talk to everyone and anyone about going minimalist. And so after her book, I listened to the minimalist podcast. I listened to read other books on minimalism and then I started to get into like sustainability because when you start to like become more aware of 
what you bring into your life, you become more aware of like how you're letting it go. And I didn't want to give off the message that you just throw everything away because that literally did not sit well, like in my gut and in my heart. And so I started to read up more on that. And I just, just became super interested. I was probably like really annoying to all of my friends and family. They're like, oh, Amy's on on another kick. I I heard it. Yeah. Okay. You read a book. We got it. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, exactly. But it was like such this like huge change in me. So right around that time, I decided to, I wanted like a creative outlet. I wanted a way to connect with other people outside of my own circle of friends and family. And so I decided to start an Instagram account and I did it without really thinking about it. I didn't even want to tell my husband. I didn't want to tell my best friends. I just kind of did it almost anonymously, but I put like, you know, my face out there and I started to connect to other moms and particularly who were interested in minimalism and in just being thoughtful and conscious about the process as well. And somehow very organically, this Instagram account, it's Minimalista Mom. And it started to just grow really quickly. I feel like it was just timing and I'm I'm not really sure, but somehow it grew. And within the first year, I had 10,000 followers and I was just doing it for fun. It wasn't anything like I didn't have any forethought of what this was going to be. But in doing that and in feeling like I had something to say on this topic and there were some people who wanted to listen to me miraculously that maybe I could help other people in their own homes, not just talking about mine. And so I took that sort of courage that the Instagram gave me and decided to sign up for two things at the same time. So I signed up for the Kanmari training through Marie Kondo where we went. And it was, as you know, I mean, it's a pretty in-depth training. It took me like six to nine months to finish the whole certification process, but I signed up for her training. And then I signed up for inspired organizer because I got the recommendation from an Instagram friend. And so with those two, I just was like, all right, I'm going to try this. I don't feel like I want to go back to speech yet, but this is such a passion of mine. I I want to explore this. And then right after I signed up for both of those, literally, I found out, surprise, you're pregnant with your third baby. And so I was like, well, I'm still going to do this. This isn't going to stop me. I'm just going to do it while I'm pregnant. And so I did both of those while I was pregnant and I finished the Kanmari certification. I was like 39 weeks pregnant. (laughs) And I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get this done. So you find yourself, you are 39 weeks pregnant. I guess your nesting instinct was I'm going to start a business. (laughs) I'm going to like birth a business too. Did you take some time off? I assume after you had the baby and then when did you decide you were really making this a business? Okay. So, and right. So she was born right before the pandemic and the pandemic hit when she was four months old. And at that point I had had paying clients and I had made a website. Like I had done basically the baseline stuff that I I learned in Inspired Organizer, which helped me give me like the framework of this is how you do a, a website. This is your basic contract. And I needed that stuff because I didn't know how to start a business. I didn't know anything about it. I felt like I, I know how to organize, but I don't know what else. And The other part, the what else is the hardest part for me. So it was super helpful, but I started to take a couple of clients and I just really enjoyed working with them. When I'm working with the client, I feel like time stops and I feel like I'm doing what I need to do. And suddenly like five hours has passed and it's time for me to go. So it's like feeling this passion and then also feeling the reward of being compensated for something that I truly love that doesn't feel like work. It gives me more motivation to put more energy into this because that's such a great feeling to be getting paid for something that you really like to do that you would do for free. It's awesome. The baby was maybe six months old when I started to take more clients. And then when she hits a year, I hired someone to come to our house to watch her part-time so that I could use that time to work more on the business and then have that time to see clients. So it was basically when she turned a year that I was like, okay, this isn't just me working sporadically. Like I, I'm going to schedule this time that no matter what, I'm going to use that time to work either in my business or for my business. And that was a little over a year ago. So it really has only been one full year of me being very serious, dedicating the time and energy towards this. But 
in that year, I've seen huge growth and I see so much potential and I'm just really excited about where it's going. The nice thing is that this is a job, like you said, it's amazing to get compensated for something that you feel like no time at all has passed and you truly love doing it. That's a huge thing about organizing. I think if you really, really love what you're doing, it it shines through also with your clients. I feel like you have to love it. Like in order to do this job, like you kind of have to really like it. Otherwise I don't think it would be very fun. Like, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) very true. Well, and I think that that's an important thing too. Something that you said is I feel like that five hours passes like nothing. I was actually thinking about a challenging client that I had where I, and this was the only time this has ever happened to me. I would check my watch. I swear every 15 minutes. And I remember that was how I knew This is not my ideal client when it clicks. And when you have that client where five hours has passed and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that all this time has passed and it feels like nothing that that's when you know that it is all clicked into. Absolutely. You essentially started a business in in a pandemic (laughs) and a lot of our organizers have done that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And we actually have a lot of people that were like, well, I started my business in February of 2020 and like, who knew, right? But you said that despite that, you've been able to experience growth, especially a lot of growth in the last few months. So can you tell people who are concerned about starting a business during this time and still feel like it's an uncertain time? Tell us a little bit about how you feel about that. I just feel like there's so many different ways that you could go in this business. I was just talking to my husband about this. He's like, you need to be pandemic proof. Like you need to be able to pivot and have different revenue streams. And so, so in in terms of like being able to pivot, I'm kind of looking at different revenue streams in terms of maybe making some affiliate marketing sales through Instagram, and then also doing talks and workshops. And another avenue is doing virtual lessons, which to be honest, I'm really new at, and it's not my favorite, but I could totally see that in being able to do that in case like you know, God forbid another pandemic hits. Well, I was about to say the nice thing about the pandemic, let's just say none of us have been like throwing a party the last couple of years, right? Like no one's having a whole lot of fun, but I do think there are lessons that we can take from it. And one of those lessons is that, yeah, as a service-based business, we all had to realize, okay, is there an alternate way to do our job? And Mm -hmm. We found out that the answer is yes. It may not be as enjoyable. It may not be the thing that really fills our cup as much. Like I would rather be in person with someone, but being able to think, hey, how can I do this differently if I had to? And really thinking about what are the other ways that I can do this job, including courses or workshops or any number of things that now we have learned we can do via a computer screen. I think that's, that makes you a really, really good business person. Tell us a little bit about some of the clients that you serve. Who do you work with? I work with all kinds of people. I tend to attract women in particular. I I don't even think I've worked with a man. I've had someone like, you know, call in for his wife, but then I end up working with the wife, but, but yeah, it's, it tends to be just a woman in a life transition who want to invest in themselves. And so I feel like my clients have shifted since I have built a team and now it, I still attract those same kinds of people, but I might attract people who are more on the Mm timeframe and might be more busy professionals or they like, I want to get this done quickly, but they still want to invest in themselves. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So tell me about uh, your decision to build a team. And that's been a big one this year. A lot of people have decided that really like going into the team is the way to go. So how'd you decide to do that? Honestly, I was feeling like tired, physically tired. And like, I do yoga. I I eat well, I take care of myself, but I was feeling tired after sessions. I'm like, how am I going to do this for 10 plus years? This isn't going to work long-term. I need help. And so I was kind of playing around with the ideas. Well, do I just charge a higher rate and always have an assistant, but I wasn't ready to have an employee. And it just made me nervous with benefits and taxes. I just didn't feel confident enough to have like an employee. So then I took Kate Waldo's course that you guys offered. I just felt like I'm like, I want to, I want to see what this is about. And I was just my like draw dropped to the floor. When I, when I saw her pay structure, when I saw what potential 
you can have with just having independent contractors work for you and you can kind of put the the cost on the clients and then also your profit margin just increases exponentially with each worker that you have and not only that you can get so much more done like you can handle the client relations like that's what i mean that, that's what we're good at right yeah. we can be the ones to talk to the client and kind of you know have the therapy session and just really help them make decisions and plan everything but what we need help with are other sets of hands you know people to like put the donations in the bag, people to, to empty the pantry, people to check expiration dates. So all those little things that take our time and energy away from focusing on the client, it really has just been like this huge change where like, I am even more excited to see clients now when I have a day when I have multiple organizers, because not only am I getting compensated better, but I am serving the client better. And now I feel like I can say yes to more types of clients before I was kind of scared to take on someone who's like, Hey, listen, I'm moving in a month. I need to do my whole house. And I would be like, I only have three sessions a week to offer. And I have other clients that I'm working with now. I'm like, okay, well, let's just get in more hands to help. And we'll get done more in less time. It has been super helpful for my business and personally, because now I'm not alone all the time. And when I'm in a situation in, in a client's home, when I feel unsure, I have people that I can bounce ideas off of. And it's just kind of feels more like it's more fun. You know, it's more fun to work with other people and not just you and the client, I think personally. And the thing I have talked to, obviously I've talked to Kate a lot about this, you know, as she was developing the courses and I've interviewed her as well. And one of the things she pointed out is I was thinking to myself, oh, you have a team because, you know, you have a a huge space that you're working or whatever. And she was saying, it doesn't matter the size of your space, no matter what house you're working in. And this is absolutely factual. You have a lot more things to do. You need more hands on any project. And like Mm -hmm. you said, it really allows you to concentrate on the client, which is absolutely the most important important thing. So you can give your full attention as the head of your business, you give that client your full attention. Mm -hmm. You can talk through their issues. You can really work through, like you said, the therapy aspect of it, because that's pretty real with almost every single client, but especially if they're interested in Kamari, like I feel like in particularly is a lot of my clients hire me because of Marie Kondo, because they know of my association with her and using her method it really is so much deeper than, Hey, get, let's get your craft closet organized. It's like a holistic method. If you kind of use her framework. Do you now take people on every job? Like, have you started to just take a team everywhere or are there some places you still go by yourself? My existing clients that I saw before I built a team, I still go by myself. I try to bring up the idea and the benefits of having more than one organizer. But to be honest, a lot of them are hesitant because I don't know, it would just be different. They're used to just having me. But now when a new person calls, I really try and encourage them that multiple organizers, you can get more done. You can get more out of your money if you have more than one person there in terms of the hourly rate structure. So not every job, I still offer one organizer options, but the majority of people now who are new clients booking, they're booking two or three organizers to come. I think that this is an important point because some people, someone asked us this recently, well, how long do you have to be in business or how long should you be in business before you think about building a team? And the answer is you can build a team immediately. If you want to, you decided pretty quickly into your business of starting to get busy that, Hey, I really, I need to build a team. It makes sense to me. So there's no time frame on, Oh, I have to be in business for two years and then I can build a team. That is I think the most beautiful thing about this business is it can be absolutely anything you want it to be. You can do two sessions a week. You can work seven days a week if you want to. You can have a team. You cannot have a team. You can build it into literally whatever you want. Yes, absolutely. My husband tells me that all the time when I come to him with questions, he's like, you're in charge. You get to (laughs) decide what you want to do and who you want to take. Like, remember you're the boss. And so it's just like, there's so many benefits. It's amazing. I'm really excited. Yeah, it is exciting. I can see it in your face and I can hear it in your voice too.
I hope you enjoyed part one of my conversation with Amy. And we're going to be talking a lot about social media on the podcast in the upcoming weeks. But Amy has built a wildly successful brand on Instagram. She is Minimalista Mom. And she is going to be talking to us about building that brand and then also giving you some surprising insights about what it means for her actual organizing clients. Looking forward to bring that to you. It's one of the reasons I wanted to break this up into two episodes because she has so many great things to say. If you have not yet joined our brand new free workshop, head to poroadmap.com. We have a new masterclass for you all about organizing three mistakes that I made in my organizing business. I fess up to everything, all sorts of great things in there. We would love to have you join us over there, poroadmap.com. Looking forward to seeing you on next week's part two. Have a great day pro organizers. Thank you so much for listening in to the Pro Organizer Studio podcast. If you'd like to get our roadmap for success as a pro organizer, head straight to www.poroadmap.com.